You're listening to the Arise to Speak pod, part of the Arise networking platform, which aims to inspire, educate, and uplift young Black female creatives. Join as we discuss social and cultural issues and delve into what it truly means to be a creative today. Hi guys, welcome to the Arise to Speak pod. We're your hosts, Zoe and Olivia. And in this episode, we're focusing on institutional racism within hospitals and the medical industry. On the topic of this episode, we're going to be talking about medical injustices, COVID-19 deaths, pregnancy and mental health, um, including like postnatal depression. So please listen at your own discretion if these things are a trigger for you. On to the episode. We're joined today with a guest, Kyra. Um, she also has interest in this topic and also has done research within her dissertation around this. So would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kyra. I studied politics and international relations at university. As Zoe said, I um, have an interest in, I guess, injustice, social justice, specifically <laughs> surrounding Black women. It's a passion of mine. So yeah. yeah, you have an interest in everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, one thing that really pulled us into this topic was because of the current pandemic, obviously with COVID-19. And we saw a recent statistic that states how black people are four times more likely to die from this, which is just, it just boggles my mind. It's actually crazy. A bit mad, isn't it? Like, it's just, how can we be four times more likely? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, compared to any other race yeah it's quite alarming to think that I don't, it's, mm. it's hard to just put it into words how alarming it is yeah like I feel like it's a lot like it's not just one factor I just feel like once again mm. like our system has like failed us like, I remember seeing it on the uh, what's it called on the news and at that point it was like two times really? more likely and I was shocked yeah and I remember speaking to my dad like I'm shocked, like, why is it so high? Yeah. And then, like, if you actually break it down, though, like, it's not just COVID. Do you know what I mean? I get where you're coming from. I feel what you're trying to say is that, like, it just shows how unjust the system is. That we are literally the bottom of society. We already knew this, kind of showed us again and proved what we already knew, that we are actually the bottom of society. Our lives do not matter to this government, to this country, in fact. And it just goes to show that institutionally we're set up to fail, medically we're set up to fail. Mm. It's just, yeah. Black people are four times more likely to die because of COVID, but I've not seen any change. If if it wasn't said white people are four four times more likely to die from COVID, do you know what I mean? The country would be in uproar, we'd be looking for like, do you know what I mean? We'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, why are so many people dying? But... Obviously, COVID is like obviously everyone's like shocked about it. Yeah. But the fact like it's killing off more of our people, it doesn't seem like anything's being done. Like it just kind of feels like like Kyra said, like everything's set up against us. It's kind of just been like a ticking time bomb, really. Like like black people have like most of us are in like um what is it called key workers. Yeah. If we're four times more likely to do you know what I mean die from COVID. It's like no one's protecting us. Do you know what I mean? Like we're the ones that still have to go out and work. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. we're overrepresenting them sort of key worker low pay jobs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's not really helping the fact. Like, okay, so we're to be more exposed to this virus more than certain races. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because some people can just work from home and stay at home. But if you're a nurse or a doctor or whatnot, it's not like you can just work from home like I was just gonna say I find it interesting as well because when I first heard I didn't hear about the four times more likely statistic it was that thing that they said that BAMEs are more likely to be all living in one house and they're all going to be like passing on different things to each other and everything and they were saying all these things about like underlying health conditions and there's more like biological factors underneath that and I just feel like yeah maybe that may be true for some people but I feel like that's such a throwaway thing that I always hear about these sort of things but I feel like there needs to be more that research done into it to see why 
I think um, with that whole underlying, I actually saw something that I was reading just by chance. Yeah. And it was talking about those underlying medical conditions, how they emphasize, emphasize and how we have these underlying medical conditions, high blood pressure, diabetes. Mm. But um, there was, I think it was an article, it was in America, and the guy who's called Michael, who was talking about how a lot of these underlying medical conditions are actually just like um, generational trauma from way back when we've been abused Mm -hmm. and enslaved over the years and how it's come to like manifest in our bodies. Like modified modified our genes because of the trauma was that intense. So that is why we actually suffer from these sort of, I don't know if this is like medically correct or whatever, but this is just like a theory that I guess. And that how I guess it makes sense about the high blood pressure. Yeah, and that's and the how we, um we market to stuff from like PTSD and stress. Yeah, it's because of the trauma that has like passed down generations. The fact that we're not facing like well, we are, I was going to say we're not facing physical trauma, but we are because of what happened a couple of days ago. But I mean, as in like, do you remember that MP that was said um that BAME people? I hate the term BAME. Uh, <laughs> what did he say, Kyra? That um, where the reason that it's spiking and we're not listening to the rules, yeah, this, that, and the other. Like I was so angry. Like I had to take it to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's deep when Facebook comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we have turned into like the little, you know, and is that like like always on Facebook, like oh yeah, oh, like, you know, but yeah, like he was basically saying it's our fault. Um, because of like the riots and like that we're not being responsible and we're like obviously like the block parties and stuff. But it's like it's hard to take him seriously when he's um do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when everyone's going to the beaches, going to like the national park, no clear up, like, guidelines. Exactly. You can't just say one group of people, this is a reason why. And I, just, I I don't understand how he can say that because isn't the UK built up of like four percent black people or something crazy? That is so it's true. It's a very so low statistic. Responsibility. That's so ridiculous. I'm yeah. best now again. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah. But here he is, probably his cousins and his aunties going to the bloody beach. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, honestly, that's what I was thinking about. Do you remember? Um, this is a bit off topic, but like you know when they said um, before the night before Eid. Um, oh, around here yeah. they were like oh yeah you're not allowed to go um, you're not Each allowed to like, houses. houses yeah but that would never happen on Christmas or yeah. like yeah so it's like why are you cancelling one certain group's religious do you know what I mean activities it's again that like that racism of like picking one group yeah of people whether it's black Asian and being like okay it's their fault it's their fault or this do you know what I mean yeah I think but it's, it's like, um I would just cut you off. I think no, it's, it's just fine. like shown the last couple of months for me personally has shown the extent of racism and hate in this country. Definitely. Like, yeah. obviously, I knew it was there, but the way I've seen it, like, literally, I feel like it's really I, been unavoidable this year. Yeah, like, honestly. Yeah. I like Meghan and Harry. And I was watching yeah. someone on TV, and this um, woman was like, they were talking about the book, this tell all book. And she was just like, oh, I just don't like Megan. I don't know what it is. She just rubs me the wrong way. She's a bit, oh. And I just thought, how could, you don't know her from anywhere. It's really been coming from Megan. Mm, really, it's racism. Yeah, you don't like the fact that she's not white. That- I feel like, especially this year, it's just been, blo- like, we knew, because obviously we experienced it, but all the other people, I feel like they've just been walking around, blind, like, with their eyes covered. And, like, it's just been, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's been under the surface. Like, but this year, it's literally just been blown, like, out of proportion. Yeah. Like, out of proportion. But, like, you real, cause like, even me, I've, like, obviously I knew this country, <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? They have the prejudice and biases. But the amount of racism I've seen, just, like, is absolutely... I thought we were past well, yeah. this. Like, I yes, genuinely yeah. thought this country was better than this, but nah. Yeah. Not at like, all. I actually cried, you know, when I saw this, like, Black people are two times more likely to die from COVID because I just thought, yeah, like Carrie said, I honestly thought we were past this. Like, why are black people more likely to die? Like, why am I just because of the color of my skin double the times? Obviously, it's not just a color; it's biological, but whatever. But double, twice more likely to die than my neighbor across the road. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like you just condemn from birth. Just yeah, and it's like again yeah. the system, the healthcare. Yeah, it's just I've just 
being failed. It's just like, what the hell? I'm going to kind of sway it a little bit, but um, I remember um, the Kayla Williams. She mm. was a woman in South London who died. She had coronavirus and her husband called the paramedics. And this was like, it was kind of like the beginning. I think Yeah, this was, was like one of the first March. cases of death, wasn't it? And yeah, I exactly. This. Yeah. And um like the he her husband called up and he was saying, like, you know, she's got severe chest like pains and she can't breathe, she's got high fever. And the paramedics came and they were like, She's not a priority. Cause I remember they said it was only like um pregnant people and the elderly, right? Mm-hmm. They got it so wrong. They did <laughs> from the get-go. And then unfortunately, like the next day she like deteriorated so much that she died. And oh, just yeah. thinking about that, like the fact that they said to her, you're not a priority, even though she was in such a state with it, like... So I feel like that breathe. line, you're not a priority, that sums up life being a black person in this world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not a priority. Especially yeah. a woman as well. I think exactly. you have to just highlight that as well. This is evidence, like, this woman... You, that's the thing that's scary as well. If you're in pain or if you, you're worried about your body or your health and you're going to someone for help and they're not giving it to you it's like what do you do like they just Where left you turn, yeah because yeah. exactly. 999 is the first you know what I mean we all go there if like we're scared for our life you know what I mean yeah so and then for them too like the people that you've been taught that will help you in an emergency is now saying you're not a priority and now she's not here today it's just it's awful that's why I call the NHS stuff. You know, like, I'm not quite sure, but I'm, sh- like, the beginning of COVID, you know, like, when the um, hospital staff, like, were dying, all yeah. of them were Black or Asian, you know? Yeah, you know, like, from the world, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But no one was highlighting that. No yeah. one was, like... And these are people who are risking their health and their lives for other people, like... For other races yeah. as well. yeah. It's just ridiculous, like, and these are like they have kids, they have families. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is someone's mom, this is someone's dad, she and just a child. Yeah, exactly. They're not a priority. Who are you to tell who's a priority and who's not? Like, it just gets me so angry. Like, you know, the woman I forgot her name who got spat at. Um, oh, Belly. Oh. Is it oh. Belly Matinga? <sighs> That like, really, that, oh my gosh. That was so be sad. Not talk for murder, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's murder. It is murder. It what, really I don't murder. know what happened. Is he dead? No, he's alive. She's dead. But he said that they reviewed the CCTV and this basically said that um, there was no charge brought against him and that he must have tested positive. He did an antibody test and they said that he never had coronavirus. but. The antibody test is not even one hundred percent accurate, so it's a case yeah. of how do we know that that test is telling the truth? Got swept under the rug, didn't they? No one really. Exactly, but then again, that's another <coughs> child is out of mom because of a selfish person that wants to bring themselves and split yeah. up one else. Yeah, and yeah. even if it didn't have COVID nineteen and it didn't pass it to her, he's spitting on someone, not an assault in itself. But he's just that's what I the thought. Fact that he even that on us to start off with what sort of behaviour is that I thought that's like, a common assault isn't it yeah like, it's absolutely disgusting I feel that's like yeah, the lowest form of like just disrespect you could ever do on anybody it's just yeah it's, it's like disgusting, it's disgusting. Knowing that he has COVID, even though it's saying that he's a but I don't believe that. Him knowing that he has his dirty COVID and he's spitting on someone else, it's just like, is that not, to me, that's manslaughter, that's attempted murder to me. Yeah. yeah. I can't lie. So, speaking about black deaths and obviously due to like healthcare and systematical fails, um, it's also been reported recently. Well, I don't think it's recent to me, I didn't know this, but I'm sure you did this in your dissertation, Kyra, that um, black women, mothers are more likely to die in childbirth. Yes. Um, now, I wrote an essay on this. It was just talking about how, um, yeah, black women are more likely to die, five times more likely to die in childbirth than any other, um, and then in comparison to white women. I'm not sure in terms of Asian women for that statistic, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds like some medieval thing to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I just want to like highlight it is death while pregnant or within 42 days of pregnancy or 
between 42 days to six months post birth. So if you give birth and then between one to six months after that, that's also classed as childbirth, like oh, okay. childbirth. Yeah, I was looking at the causes because obviously it, I want to like kind of highlight this is like a sensitive topic right now, especially with like Nicole, you know, the YouTuber who yeah. family like passed away. But like, I feel like that really highlighted for so many people. It's just, again, like another evidence how we've been failed. Like pregnancy is supposed to be, you're supposed to be excited. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not going to be, you shouldn't be scared for your life. But I was looking at like the main causes it's been like multiple causes so like it was saying that one of the causes is like obviously heart disease like um or having like you were saying you know like previous health conditions that mm-hmm. are worsen. but like one of the main ones is like the stereotype of the angry black woman and like how we can take more pain and yeah. you know what I mean? yeah like the pain. strong black woman sort of stereotype that sort of yeah because there's been like loads of like um cases even like Serena Williams right when she was giving birth it said that she had a near death experience while she was giving birth to her child her daughter and like all her symptoms were missed by the nurses and like dismissed by them and that nearly like she nearly ended up dying Mm. because once again like they just dismiss and just think oh you know what she's just a first time mom she doesn't know what the pain is like. Do you know what I mean? Like, Isn't that so scary though? If Serena Williams can be dismissed, ignored, yeah. and have yeah. the back that, then what hope does your average black woman have? Exactly. She That's will have thing. private healthcare, top of the range healthcare. So it's Serena Williams. So this what, is what hope I mean. does any other black woman have? It's scary, isn't it? Because if you're thinking, I'm nobody, yeah, and Serena Williams. Like, you think should have, like, a smooth, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Not, like, being dismissed. I feel like that would definitely, like, lead towards, like, a lack of trust. Like, if you hear these things, especially Serena Williams, but, like, you know, family members, friends, you're hearing, like, similar situations happening with them. Like, you feel like you probably wouldn't be able to be 100% about how you're feeling while being pregnant. You know, maybe you feel like you're downplaying the pain or something is an issue. Like, maybe you feel like you wouldn't want to come out with it because you yeah. might not be taken seriously because of what you've heard. Or Yeah, I feel like if I'm in pain and I'm pregnant and the, the healthcare people are dismissing it, I'm like, oh, it's not that serious. Like, yeah. If yeah, they're yeah. dismissing it, I should dismiss it. But it says that um, the NHS said they are working to try and reduce the inequalities. don't know how they're doing that, but... Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a lot of words, not enough action. The same way with... Um, I can't remember what it was. Boris Johnson basically requests an inquiry into something to yeah. do with inequality, um, to do with race. And the thing is, we've done this, this inquiry has been done. It was done a couple of years ago. Instead of actually looking for the recommendations from this inquiry and implementing them, it's just it's saying, let's do an inquiry, let's do an inquiry. It's just words. You can do an inquiry, but if you don't act on a recommendation, what is the point? Because they're coming from their point of view. They're not getting the people in that it's affecting. Do you know what I mean? So they're coming yeah. with their right privileged eyes. You're not taking the time to really understand what's going on here. Yeah. I feel like it's different as well because if it's from like a black person's perspective, you'd think that could be any one of my family members, that could be any one of my friends. And just them being a pregnant black woman would make it even more likely that they're going to die. Like, you know, no one's getting pregnant anytime soon, but it's just like that point when it comes, if you, if that's what you choose to do, do you know what I mean? Mm. When that point comes, you, I don't want that added worry, that added anxiety of, oh my gosh, like I've even started thinking, do I, would I even want a hospital birth now? Like, honestly, because mm. it's just like, if I'm not going to get the help or get the support that I need from hospital, I feel like I'd feel safer at home. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I have people around me who actually listen to my opinion and I know that there's something wrong, then someone just dismissing me. Um, but obviously I don't want to just leave it in like a negative note. I was researching and I found this Instagram um, post. So the Instagram app is called According to Do No Harm Collective. And they were saying like, so what can you do? 
as a black pregnant woman? What's the point of just saying, okay, we're five times more likely to die, we're five times this if we're not really putting it into action? So they were saying that you should like prioritize and attend all antenatal classes and consider having a black doula, which is like a birthing partner, so you have extra support. That's a good idea, so, yeah. Yeah. And inform your midwives of any family history of heart disease and like and if they're not listening to you, if you've got any like pain or something, it said request a second opinion. Mm-hmm. But also if you are like a healthcare professional, like, you know, because quite a lot of people, we're talking about these topics because they affect us. But some people like who are white, they don't understand. Like we're telling them this, but they don't know how to implement it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If you're a healthcare professional and you actually want to help protect black pregnant women, there's call out your colleagues for any like malpractice or anything that's been done wrong. Don't just push it onto the carpet because that could be someone's life lost. Listen to each patient and don't lead with your past experiences or like, like oh, I know first time moms, you know, they're just going to scream, blah, 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 blah. But if your patient is in pain, this color of their skin should not determine how you treat someone. And also you need to check your bias. So like, I feel like there's so much underlying, mm. what's it called? Unconscious when you're like, yeah. yeah, that's in everything though, that's in everything. I think I think one thing with that would be like, even if you're not aware of that you're doing it, just by being aware that there is such thing as an unconscious bias and you could be doing it without realising, would be helpful as a whole, like, because you know... Oh. Okay. But there's conscious bias as well. Oh, definitely. Just be aware of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. know that is there something behind your de- reasoning to think, oh, this woman, you know, she's being extra about it, you know? Well, there's definitely conscious bias as well. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. We see it all over the news recently. Yeah. So, moving on, we've been talking about systematic racism quite a bit. And just to have a bit of clarity on what exactly is systematic racism or institutional racism. Um, it just looks at the way that racial injustices operate over the whole of society and not necessarily on a one and one-to-one interaction. And it's often embedded in, in institutions. So similarly how we were talking about unconscious bias, it's usually there, but it's not visible or obvious to other people. And you've probably heard of it recently with, you know, police brutality and sometimes within schools and things. But in this case, as we're looking into the medical field, we feel like this is something that's been overlooked within medicine because you have the ideal that, you know, the nurses and doctors are there to look after you, which is what they should be doing. However, sometimes that's not the case. So as we're taking more of a medical route, I'd like to introduce Sonia. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Sonia. Do you want to tell us you know, your age or maybe like what you're studying at uni? That would be a bit helpful. Uh, I am... 20 I just turned 20 I study medicine at the University of Leicester we're just talking about right now systematical racism and like you were telling us about the the lady yeah so do you want to elaborate a few years ago there was this doctor called Hadiza Bawagaba who got basically taken off the um medical the gmc register and the general medical council they kind of set the rules and regulations for like every doctor okay and she got taken off the register for the death of this little boy um but basically my um personal tutor worked in leicester with her and Mm -hmm. he was saying how a lot of like the events leading up to this little boy's death had to do with like the hospital's failures, but she kind of just got the, you know, the the blame for everything. So I think that day, the electronic computer system in the hospital failed and she didn't get the blood test until like four hours later. Oh, So wow. that's just like one of the ways in which you could see the hospital clearly had a lot of problems. Yeah. And they she just, just yeah. And this, like the case was really really big like it was on the news and everything and it just feels like she you know she was kind of like unfairly blamed in a way because she only just came back from like a maternity leave as well yeah so that was her first day back um her senior doctor wasn't like around either so there was just a lot that was wrong but I don't think it came across that way on the news they um charged it with like gross negligence so basically they they think the way she handled it 
was so bad that it was basically criminal. Wow. Yeah. That's so bad. That's the thing. Like, how could, obviously, I don't know too much, but it's like, if the hospital, if the thing failed, the system, the software that you're using failed, how mm. is that her fault? Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, there was a lot to do. I'm sure she had her shortcomings. I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah. part of it is a bit, you know, so dodgy. Slight. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. And, like, I feel like media love to do that, like, with, like, black people. Mm-hmm. Like, they just, when something goes wrong, they they need someone to like, just yes. Yeah. But you were saying that she's back on the register now, isn't it? So yes, she like, is. So it's a bit like if she, what she did was so bad, like yeah, I thought <laughs> it would take it off of you for good. You yeah, know, like, that's what I thought. Was so in 2014, there was this nursing textbook about um, like BMEs and ethnic minorities. And mm-hmm. they had like this section where they were essentially saying like just really ridiculous stereotypes. Basically, they were saying how black people have a higher pain tolerance than anyone else and that they believe suffering and pain are inevitable. So it's like a cultural thing. But like mm-hmm. they've got like breakdowns. So like the thing is called, it's actually in a textbook, you know, it's called cultural um, differences in response to pain and then they've got like a breakdown for Arabs and Muslims Asians, wow. black Jews Hispanics and Native Americans like even one says like um, Native Americans they usually tolerate a high level of pain without requesting pain medication how do you know that do you know there's, I mean? there's no even like science behind this <laughs> what I mean like have you ever like been taught anything like this well personally I have not been. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking because obviously like you're like being taught medicine now and like this mm-hmm. is actually in a certain nursing textbook like no, I think that must be very outdated. But I feel like when you do go to the doctors, you 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 can sense that they kind of take um the uh, complaints of black people a little bit less seriously. Yeah, mm. like, oh, kind of oh, yeah, definitely. That's actually so true. I'm just like you have about- to emphasize a lot more. Yeah, these people are just not here for us. <laughs> I know someone who's in my family friend, and she was yeah. ill. She went to the doctor. And they said, oh, she was diagnosed with this thing. She started her on medication. And it turns out it was a completely different thing. And the medication and stuff, the treatment they'd been given her, was literally the worst thing you could do for what she had. Really? And yeah. now she can hardly walk without crutches. She's, it, she finds it hard to leave the house. She can't go out by herself. And that wow. was just because she was diagnosed with a completely wrong thing. I'm guessing there was no, like, consequences for that. <laughs> not that I know of. Yeah. No, that's a consequence. How can you get it so wrong? Completely wrong. Yeah. And now her life just, yeah, her quality of life has been reduced. Wow. That's awful. No, but if anything, I feel like it just means we need more people representing our Definitely. race. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like obviously, like a lot of nurses and stuff like that are mm-hmm. black, but like you know, like your lecturers and your doctor, like obviously you can do placement this year. But... Oh, yeah. Like I basically had two black lecturers, and they weren't like permanent lecturers; they were um guest lecturers okay. for the whole two years. So I did not see any black That's like true. doctors. Are you a bit worried about that, or does it not? <laughs> or... uh, I don't know. I feel like I. I just thought maybe it's a problem with Leicester, hopefully. But yeah, um, there's not a lot of people that you can like look up to. I feel like that would be like really disheartening as well. Like look up to people and they just don't look like you. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can't find a connection. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's a bit of a dark note. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, little wins that we've had I feel like recently the guy who made their textbook for um seeing like symptoms on black people oh really I didn't know about this oh, yeah because yeah because he's a medical student and he made a textbook where because when they teach a lot of like clinical science for a lot of diseases it's just on white patients and the one um, question in your mind is always like oh you know, how would this look on a black person? I saw that, actually. I saw that on um, BBC News, actually. It was actually mm-hmm. mad. Like, it looked so different reactions on, the yeah. on a white person. And then they had the black person, like, picture next to it. 
And honestly, like, it looked like two different things. <laughs> it needs to be implemented. You know, it's, a bit, it's a bit scary how that's not, like, a given now. Like, we're in 2020. And it's just and happened. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's not something yeah, I'm like, yeah, we knew about that, you know? Imagine how many people have been misdiagnosed. Like Kyra, the person like Kyra knows. And now yeah. look. Because like even, people. like, something as simple as jaundice, you know, when your skin goes yellow. Yeah. Like, we were sat in lectures, and then the guy was like, yeah. you would just be able to see your skin go yellow. And my friend who was next to me, who's also dark skin, was like, mm. <laughs> how can we see our skin go yellow? Again, I was reading something um, <laughs> and um, it was talking about how um, I'm going to say black. I don't know if it's been, but I'm just going to go with black. How black students are um, show symptoms of neurodi- like I don't know what the word, I think it's neurodiverse um, sort of conditions like dyslexia, autism, ADHD, Asperger's, the same um, rate as white students. However, black students are less likely to be diagnosed and therefore they live a life not knowing. I also don't know they've got this. It can cause, it causes anxiety, depression and suicide in a lot of, mm-hmm. when they turn to adults. And um, it was saying that, it was saying that 40% of male inmates, I think it's in the US though, so 5% of male inmates have ADHD. So crazy about how um, just because they're not diagnosed with something, they don't get the help they needed. And yeah. then it becomes a sort of school to prison pipeline. Students who are, you know, seen as the bad students and naughty students yeah. are just sort of like pushed into crews and pupil referral units and then end up in prison when really all they needed was a diagnosis, which will just give them some clarity in their life. I remember I watched, um, I think it was a BBC documentary, um, or it might have been Channel 4, and they were saying, like, with, like, really young kids at, like, daycare centres and everything, and they're saying, like, how they're being victimised more, and I, I was in Birmingham, actually, and this woman was basically saying, like, she tries to, like, specialise with like um, BAME children and stuff because she says she feels like a lot of them have been like unfairly like told that they've been naughty or they just don't like they don't cooperate well with other kids and everything and they're getting kicked out when really all they need is like a little extra nurturing or just equal treatment to how they would treat the white ones because they don't get that like you know they don't get the same kind of like punishment that's oh, chances. That's all. Like, when I look back at my school days, like I was diagnosed with dyslexia and borderline ADD. And when I look back at my school, does I just think why did nobody see that? Like, yeah. do you know when you just I read my school, I was reading my school reports when I was clear in our room, and it was always like, oh, Kyra is a bright student. She just lacks attention. She struggles to focus in class. Um, she daydreams instead of listening to the teacher. And I'm just thinking. Why have you not picked up on... Because if it was a white student, you'd pick up on the signs. Yeah. But yeah. I was punished for it. If you can yeah. see I'm struggling to keep up with the class, why are you not thinking, this something's not right here? But instead you're punished and told, oh, keep up, stop daydreaming, pay attention. I think yeah. that would be the case for so many black students. Instead of being like... Instead of the teacher thinking, what is it that I can do to help? Maybe they are, they are neurodiverse and need extra help, yeah. extra support. Yeah, instead of getting the support, they're getting punished instead. And it's kind of like adding to that cycle of institutional racism. But it like, does limit what you can achieve. And I think yeah. it's yeah. I think yeah. only 5% of students with ADHD graduate from uni- well, college in America, but wow. university. I just don't understand how. It's, it's obviously a pattern. It happens to so many people. Why are people not thinking, right, we need to do something because about this? we're not a priority. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. And especially with women, because I think a lot of the cases, that I think um, when it comes to women, it might manifest differently yeah. in, I guess, young girls at school. And then they yeah. have different symptoms. So they're not looking for that in female, but the same thing they're looking for in males. Which again is just down to um, prejudice and bias, I guess. Exactly. But yeah. um, 
like a more positive note, guys, how do you think we can tackle or like how do you think how can we overcome this? I think like just being more aware of what's happening. I mean, obviously this year has taught us a lot and shown us a lot. And I feel like just sort of spreading the word about it and just trying to be mindful, like this is something that is limiting me, but I can do something about it sort of thing. But I think we shouldn't burden ourselves. I don't think you should have to have a pressure on yourself to now go out and be a social justice warrior who solves racism in the community. Yeah who brings peace to the land because you know what is just existing as a black person is hard enough in itself. Yeah, and then adding all that added pressure. Yeah. To keep yourself safe, you kind of have to look out for your own back. So in terms yeah. of like, but you shouldn't have to do that. That's no, what's annoying. That's back, the way like, the world is. So I guess just educate yourself and, you yeah. know. That's taking things into your own hands, even though I don't think you should have to. No. You should trust in the system that has been put in place but obviously it's been proven that it's just just fails us once again yeah um, I was gonna say I think like you know organizations like Black Mothers Matter I think just them like raising awareness of it and showing resources yeah. and I'm pretty sure they did do a fundraiser helping black mothers and that's really important especially for now Sonia do you um, have an opinion on how we can tackle or how you would personally overcome uh, maybe not like having a no tolerance towards like little microaggressions yeah. so that people can like be aware of how certain behaviors are contributing to you know racism in general I feel like it's just calling it out when you see it and just being brave so thank you everyone for listening if you'd like to hear more about us or see more about us. All our socials are arise underscore creatives. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.